And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have a fully installed working version of Kali Linux on VMware Player 16. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Tech Tink Trance channel where we're going to tinker and learn. Today, we're going to be installing Kali Linux on Windows 10 without a USB or DVD. This is a simple, free, and effective way to use Kali Linux. Let's see. Um, what you're going to need is you're going to need to download Kali Linux ISO and the VMware Workstation Player. I choose VMware Workstation Player because it's free. Uh, this is all free. It's simple and safe to do. There's a lot to learn using Kali Linux. Research it. Find out for yourself. Um, so... What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look at and see where we can download the VMware player for free. You just go to VMware.com and then you should be able to get what you need there. And then you just scroll down a little bit and then you can try workstation player for Windows and you would download now type of thing. I have a version of VMware Player running on this machine. I'm not going to update or download it right now. It should be sufficient for what I'm doing. The next thing you're going to need is um, a Kali Linux download. So I think I want to get the latest release. So what I'm going to do is go ahead Checked on download mirrors. All right, so we're going to do the installer, the ISO. When it downloads, we're going to put it up to, um, I'm going to go to my ISO folder. And I'm going to put it there for safekeeping. All right. All right, copy it to my place for ISOs for the time being. All right, so we have our ISO. We are ready to go. So this is where we would uh, create a new virtual machine. To make things a little bit simple, I'm going to bring this up for us here. We're going to create a virtual machine. And we're going to run the Kali Linux installer. So I'm going to create a new virtual machine just like this. I'm going to use an ISO image. I'm going to browse. I'm going to go to my place for ISOs. Everything should be in alphabetical order. And I want the 4A installer so it says that it could not detect what operating system it is so i will just run it as linux if it's listed use it if it's not no big deal But let me figure out. I'm going to do it as a Debian 10 64 bit. I think that'll be fine. But I want to call it Kali. Now, I don't know if that's going to help me or hurt me, but we'll see together. We'll give it a nice little size. 
we'll store the virtual disk. This, what we're doing is uh, we're specifying disk capacity. So we're divvying up some of our host space, space for the VM that we're creating. Virtual machine will be created with the following settings. So I have 20 gigabytes hard to disk space. Uh, 20, Two 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 thousand megabytes, two thousand forty eight megabytes, two gigabytes of uh memory, that you know that. So basically, you're concerned with the operating system, and you know you make sure you got the right file that you wanted to use, and then go there. All right, so. The virtual machine is ready to run, but it's powered off. So, let's see. I'm going to run this machine. All right. All right, so that we can see what's going on, I'm gonna move things around a little bit. I'm gonna do the graphical install. So, uh, and then we got the install. We got advanced options, all these nice options. I'm just gonna hit enter on the graphical install. Media and valid argument. All right, so we're just going to get it going. Continue. United States. American English. And this is running off of that ISO file that I downloaded. I mean, it's, it's, it's not that hard. Notice that I didn't create a DVD. Um... I didn't need a USB stick. And basically, we're using virtualization to get the job done. Uh, it's uh, cheap, it's free, it's effective, and it's fun. You can learn a lot from it. So, call this Kali. There's a one. Continue, that's the host name. Now, the domain name is part of the internet address, right? Your host name, often something isn't .com. If you're setting up a home network, you can make up something up, but make sure you use the same domain name for all your computers. Um, I'm gonna put W389. Okay, I need my numlock. All right, user account. So we're going to create a user account. I am Paul ED. I am Paul ED. Continue. Okay, they want me to start it with the lowercase letter. I didn't know that. That password. Make sure you put a password you can remember. And we are in Eastern time zone. Gonna detect disk and other hardware. We'll just use the entire disk. Go. All right, so it's doing the partitioning of this. I'm just winging through this right now. It's really easy to do. You want to click yes for write this to change, write changes to this. It's going to do the formatting for you. It's really easy. It's 
I mean, if you want to get technical, you can uh, change some of the settings and all that. But um, I like to keep it simple. Simple tech. That's what we're about here. Simple tech. But this, it does get pretty. There's some very useful things. Like, if you want to learn more about it, like, this is not the only distro, but there are, you know, other distros out there that that may do similar, but don't come as close in what Kali does. And there's a lot to it. I'm just scratching the surface myself. All right, so it's installing the base system. I'm packing the Linux 5.14 Royal Kali Linux for image, all that good stuff. So I'm pretty impressed with the installer. It's pretty quick, you know. Doesn't take long at all. Now it's going to take a minute to get all the stuff installed. At the moment, only the core of the system is installed. The default sections below will will install Kali Linux standard desktop environment and the default tools. You could customize this by choosing a different desktop environment or a different collection of tools. I'm just going to go with defaults for now and let it be. And this is a virtual machine. You can always delete it. You won't lose your real machine, your host machine. And you can just, you know, reinstall it again. Try different settings. See what works for you. See how you benefit from it and that sort of thing. So it's going to take a while. It's going to retrieve 2,087 files with 26 seconds remaining on that. Then we're going to do a select and install. It's doing a selecting and install software. I mean, there's a lot, but we're getting it. Okay, so, um, yeah, it's just a little process here. It's going to take a minute. So it's retrieving the files, it's unpacking the modules and all that stuff. It's going to give us a nice, fully functional desktop with all the default core tools that come with Kali Linux. Now, this is the first time I'm installing it on a VMware player. I have it installed on the, um, the Proxmox. So I've played with it before. It's a good handy tool, like, if you want to just do some, like, research, especially if you want to do some ethical hacking of your own stuff, see where your vulnerabilities are. This is definitely the tool you'd want to use for that sort of thing. Plus, there's all kinds of good things that you could do with it. And it's simply amazing. So it's just a hurry up and wait game, you know?
Mm-hmm. This takes a minute. This takes so long. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. Now what's happening now is that all the little different tools are getting installed and that sort of thing. Pretty amazing stuff. I think that you'll have fun if you just, if you know what you're doing, you know, be careful out there. But that's the thing. Uh, it's done some configuring of uh, man-db, AMD64. This is fine. It must be a huge thing. Okay. Moving right along. Moving right along, it's doing Python 3. So with Kali Linux comes all kinds of goodies that you can use for various activities involving testing, research, and that sort of thing of computer systems. But as we see, it takes quite a few minutes to get installed. Okay, it's okay. And once again, this has been installed without using, you know, nothing but an ISO file. And this is all on the hard disk. This got to hurry up, man. I got to go to work soon. Oh, McDonald. Adam Farm. Yeah, yo. And on his farm, he had a chicken. Yeah, yo. Anyway. All right, all right, in all seriousness, here we go. This is, uh, got the Kali Linux default installed. The process of selecting and installing software is almost complete. I don't know what we have next. It's going to clean up. It's probably going to reboot or something like that. Okay, it's installing the bootloader. All right, so install the Grub bootloader. It seems this new installation is the only operating system on a computer. If so, it should be safe to install Grub bootloader to your primary UFI. Warning, if your computer has another operating system installer failed to detect, it'll make that operating system temporarily unbootable. 
The Grub can be manually configured later to boot it. So install the Grub bootloader to your primary drive. Sure. You need to make the newly installed drive bootloader. And you so you're selecting the drive, and the only drive I have is just this 20 gigabyte drive that I allocated in this. So I'm going to use the, that manually and select it. So you, it, what it's saying basically is we're installing the group Grub bootloader. You need to make newly installed system bootable by installing the Grub bootloader on a bootable device. The usual way to do this is install group to your bootable drive is UFI. UEFI partition boot record. You may instead install Grub to a different drive or partition to over to removable media. That's not applicable, so we're just going to select the device and let it go. So the installation has been finished up. It's going to be real soon here. We're going to have like cookies. But who knows how many steps. But this is good for you guys to see. How many steps there are doing, to doing this but we should be wrapping up the installation soon because i gotta go to work soon but this is how it's done Installation is complete, so it is time to boot into your new system. Make sure you remove the installation media so that you boot into the new system rather than restarting the installation. Removing the media is not applicable, but we're going to go ahead and just see what happens. All right, then I'm going to hit enter. See what happens. So... I want to enter my name. Enter my password. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have a fully installed working version of Kali Linux on VMware Player 16. Um, this is not too hard to do. Like I said, it, it's free. You can benefit by learning a lot. There's a lot to learn here. There's a lot of valuable information using Kali Linux and that sort of thing. You could test a lot of different things, test your lot of setups, test your networks, test your this. As that and you could experiment a little bit which is really neat so if you're into you know cybersecurity this is one of the tools that you would use to do it on Windows I don't think it'd be like applicable so with that ladies and gentlemen if you like the video uh, please like the video on your way out if you are not subscribed feel free to subscribe and comment and share the video. Help us grow a little bit. You know what I mean? In 2021, we're doing it. Thank you for watching. Peace.